Okay, we're going to get started. Thanks for joining us again for the final week of the webinar series, Satellite Derived Annual PM 2.5 Datasets in Support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. Again, my name is Melanie Flood cook I'm a research scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Washington, D.C., USA. I'm again joined by my colleagues, colleagues Dr. Pawan Gupta, who provided the week one webinar, Mr. Brock Blevin, our set training coordinator, and Ms. Elizabeth Hook, technical writer and editor, who are also supporting this webinar series. This is week three of this webinar series. Week one focused on the RCET program, an introduction to the SDGs, and a brief introduction to the fundamentals of remote sensing. Week two introduced the PM 2.5 estimates developed by the World Health Organization. In this week's session, we'll use the QGIS software to analyze and map the PM 2.5 estimates discussed last week. Here's an outline of what will be covered in today's webinar. First, we'll briefly review where to obtain the data files before introducing the QGIS software. My colleague, Dr. Gupta, will then review other potentially helpful websites and data portals. I have included both mine and Dr. Gupta's contact information for your reference. The learning objectives for this week are to learn about how to obtain, display, and analyze the WHO PM 2.5 estimates using the QGIS software as well as review the alternative, the alternative informative websites and data portals. First, we're going to begin with just a few slides reviewing relevant content from sessions one and two. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, are an initiative by the United Nations. They contain a set of 17 aspirational global goals and 169 specific targets covering a broad range of social, economic, and environmental issues. Goal 3, Good Health and Well-Being, and Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities, contain targets that specifically address the need to reduce air pollution. According to a WHO report, air pollution is responsible for one in every nine deaths, or about three million people annually. While there are a number of pollutants associated with health risks, such as ozone, nitrogen dioxide, and sulfur dioxide, PM2.5 is most commonly used as an indicator of air pollution exposure. As a reminder, PM2.5 is particulate matter, which is another term for aerosol, with an aerodynamic, aerodynamic diameter of 2.5 microns or less. Last week, we discussed various ways that satellite-derived products, like aerosol optical depth, combined with information from an atmospheric chemical transport model, could be used to produce estimates of surface PM2.5. Specifically, the von Donkelaar approach described last week provides annual mean estimates of PM2.5 from 1998 to 2015. This data set can be accessed from the Socioeconomic Data and Applications Center, or CDAC site, for 1998 to 2012, or directly from the University of Dalhousie website for these and later years. The von Dunkeler method and others provide multi-year global PM2.5 estimates. However, they do not provide an analysis of the uncertainties associated with these estimates. Seeking a standardized method, the WHO and the University of Bath have developed a method to calculate both PM2.5 estimates along with their associated measures of uncertainty. The Data Integration Model for Air Quality, or DMAC model, estimates surface PM2.5 and associated measures of uncertainty at high spatial resolution by utilizing information from multiple sources, such as population data, ground monitor data, and other information about local monitoring, monitoring networks, simulated PM2.5 estimates, satellite-based estimates, and topography and land use information. Currently, only annual mean estimates for the year 2014 are available. The full gridded data set is available from the WHO website. 
However, the CSV file containing the full gridded data set is very long at approximately 1.4 million rows. My colleague, Dr. Pawan Gupta, has kindly subsetted these gridded estimates by country. These files can be obtained at the NASA AVDC site accessed by the link shown here. These are the files we're going to be working with today. And I'll, I'll do this live once I'm done with these slides. So if anybody worried about grabbing the data, we'll, we'll go over that. In this next section, we're going to demonstrate how to obtain, display, and analyze the WHO PM 2.5 estimates using the QGIS software. QGIS is an open source geographic information system, or GIS. This software can be used for a variety of applications. We will only focus on a small subset today. Links to read more information about QGIS, as well as a link to the user guide can be seen on this slide. It's worth noting that though we're using this open source GIS tool, similar exercises can be done in other GIS software, such as ArcGIS. <clears throat> By now, you've hopefully downloaded the QGIS software and either the full graded data set or some or one of the country files. In this next section, we're going to go over how to start a QGIS project. We'll add a CSV layer and view the gridded PM 2.5 estimates. And for today's example, we're going to use India. We'll show you how to change the colors, as well as how to make the color scale coarser or finer. We'll go over various ways to define a subset using different shapes, as well as calculate basic statistics on both the full data set as well as each subset. And finally, I'll show you how to make a map <coughs> sorry, of the PM 2.5 estimates containing a legend and other features. So first, we're going to start at the AVDC website where the gridded country estimates are available. Going to, so by accessing this link, we'll take you to this page where each country is listed. I'm going to go down to India. Now, um, anybody interested in downloading the India or United States country shape files? Um, I think the Dropbox link is in the chat box. So you can do that. Just clicking on any of the individual countries will bring up a dialog window where you can just save, um, save those CSV files to a folder in your computer. So next, we are going to open QGIS. And OK. So this is a blank slate where we're going to start a new project. This panel shows the layers panel where we're going to see each of our individual data layers. So. The first thing we're going to do is upload our PM 2.5 estimates. We're going to go to Layer and add a layer. And then scroll down. Oops. <laughs> I pressed too soon. Layer, add a layer. And then we're going to add a delimited text layer, which brings up this dialog box. We want to choose our country PM 2.5 estimate file. This layer name is what QGIS is just going to call um, this, the data contained within this layer. These options show the formatting of the CSV file. So here, and actually before we do this, let's go and actually open up what you download. OK, so this is what the, each CSV file will look like. There's one header line, two, a, a second uh, line indicating the field names, and then the data, longitude, latitude, country, and PM 2.5. So from this box, 
you can tell QGIS how the file is formatted. So we have one header line to discard, and this box indicates that that first row has the field names. This shows a preview of the, how the file is going to be read in. So for example, if we say, if we uncheck this box, it moves those field names to that first row and th that data won't be read in properly. So in this way, you can make sure that the file is being read in correctly. For the geometry definition, we're using point coordinates. Our X field is going to be longitude. You see you have each of the variables here to choose from. And our Y field is going to be latitude. We click OK. And it wants us to choose a coordinate reference system. For our purposes, we are going to use the WGS84. And click OK. And now you can see our map of India, but it's not currently showing the PM 2.5 estimates. So right now it's just showing a single value with a single symbol. This panel on the right here is showing the layer styling panel that basically controls how the data is viewed. You can access this panel above where the layer is listed here on the left by the little paintbrush. You can sort of toggle it on and off to make it appear and disappear. To view the PM 2.5 estimates in a way that makes a little bit more sense, we're going to choose the graduated choice here. And then we can choose a color scale. I'm just going to choose this by default for now. And then we're going to change, choose the mode by which the, these values are classified. There are several choices here. Equal interval will take all of the available values and divide them in equal intervals and display them accordingly, according to the number of classes defined in this box here on the right. The quantile will display, will divide them, uh, divide all of the values up into sort of equal number classes where there are equal number of data points within each class. The natural breaks has, is, goes through an algorithm where each class will be defined by minimum variance within each class and maximum variance between classes. Standard deviation will calculate the mean of your data set and then display it with respect to one or two standard deviation away from the mean. Pretty breaks is just what it sounds like. It's nice rounded numbers. So for right now, we'll choose the equal interval with five classes and we click classify. Oh, and before I've done that, I have not told it what to classify. So up here in the column, from the drop-down menu, we select PM 2.5 as the variable of interest, and then we go down and we hit classify. And we see our PM 2.5 estimates. Um, just for ease of viewing this, um, if I should also mention, um, Using the mouse, you can click and drag this picture around, or using the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. So zooming in, we can see that each of these is surrounded by a thin black border. So to make it a little bit easier to see, I will show you how to remove that. This symbol here indicates um, the symbol for each grid cell, so we click on this symbol, and then this simple marker to bring up the options. So the first thing we're going to do is change the outline style and take off the border. Choose no pen. And then you can see the colors that you've selected a lot better. And my preference is to go down to the bottom here and choose a square to view, just because I think it looks a little sharper. So going back to the previous screen, using this back arrow here, 
So now we're back to our equal interval divisions to view the PM2.5 estimates. By increasing or decreasing the number of classes, you can make this coarser or finer. So if we increase, you can see what once was about one or two colors in southern India, you start to see the features by viewing on finer scales. So now I've raised it up to 15. Now, if you want uh, numbers that are more rounded, you can either choose to modify this. So say, let's say I want it from 0 to 5. You can click on this, double click on the values, and you can define your own lower value, we'll say 0, and an upper value of, say, 5. Click OK and it changes that row. And then you can go through manually and do this. Or you can opt to do something like the pretty breaks, which divides it into nice rounded groups of 10. And even these you can modify to go from 0 to 10 instead of 5.757. And you can modify the last one to go up to, say, 190. You can change the color with this color ramp. And they have lots of different choices. You can do anything from green and brown, depending on how you want to visualize the data. I'm just going to go back to the oranges for the default. So next, let's view some statistics about the PM 2.5 estimates. To bring up the statistics panel, go up here to View, and click Statistical Summary, which brings up this panel. Um, one moment, I'm pausing for a second. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of uh, questions about how to bring up the layer styling panel at all. Um, if you go to view, and this is for any panel that I discussed today, scroll down. And you can choose layer styling here. Alternatively, where your PM2.5 layer is on this layers panel, if you have the layers panel, um, you can find the layer styling panel from this um, little paintbrush. And if you don't have this layers panel, that can also be accessed going by view, panels, and then Layers Panel. So right now, I have the Layers Panel, the Layer Styling, and the Statistics Panel up. OK. Um, definitely keep asking questions if I am going too fast or if you want me to go re go over anything. OK, so for the statistics, we want to calculate statistics on the PM2.5 values. I'm going to deselect this. So this brings up a series of statistics. The first is count, just the number of grid cells, the sum, the mean or average, the median, uh, which if you're not familiar with these terms, uh, the median and the Q1 and the Q3 represent quartiles. So if you take every number, if you take every PM 2.5 estimate and rank them in order from lowest to highest, the median will be the middle value. And the Q1 and Q3 represent the 25th and the 75th percentile. Then we've got two standard deviations, the standard deviation of the population, 
and the standard deviation of a sample, the minimum, the maximum, the range, which is the difference between the minimum and the maximum, the minority, which is the least frequent value, and the majority being the most frequent value, and the variety, which is the number of unique values. So in this way, you can see the statistics for the entire country. I'm going to pause for a minute or two while people catch up. If you have questions or want me to go over anything that I've done up to this point, please put them in the question box. Um, for those people wondering if they are supposed to be following, following everything that I'm doing step by step, I'm just going step by step for now. You can follow along if you want to, but this entire presentation is going to be available probably by the end of this week. So if it's too fast or you prefer a different time, you can download the recording and still have access to all of these instructions. I'm going to pause again to make sure that everybody who wants to catch up can catch up and anybody can ask some questions. Okay, we're going to continue on. For anybody uh, still having problems, I apologize. There's 200 people, so. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to press on, um, you know, keep asking questions, and the recording will be available. So we've seen countrywide statistics, but what we can do is we can select a particular subset of the country and view statistics on that subset. QGIS has several ways to define a subset. We want to make sure our layer is selected in our layers panel. Then scrolling up to the top, we see the Select Features tool. From the drop-down menu, the first is selecting features by just simply dragging a rectangle. And you can see that the rectangle that I have selected is highlighted. And going over to our Statistics panel, we can select this box, Selected Features Only and it changes our, our statistics. So the mean, oh, I should have checked if we unselect. So the mean for the entire country is 52.7. Now if we select, say, over this high feature, now the mean is 120, and all of the statistics change and update. So there are several ways to define a subset depending on your requirements. You can select a feature by polygon, which, oh, stop that, okay. So if I want to draw a polygon, say, around this feature, left click, and then left click at each corner, sort of drawing a shape. And then when you're done with your shape, right click. And in this way, you can sort of draw any polygon you might be interested in. And the mean of this is now up to 130, almost 130. You can also select features by radius. So uh, left clicking and hold and then drag to expand your circle. The last way we're going to show you how to subset is we're going to upload the India County shape file and overlay it on top of the country. So for this, we're going to layer, add a layer, and we're going to add a vector layer. This brings up this dialog window where we browse for our shapefile. And again, if you've used the Dropbox link or the ABDC link, you can download these files. The India admin will bring up this set of seven or so files. You want to click 
the .shp file, the shape file. Double click on that. Open. And now you can see the countries, uh, the counties rather, within the shape file. The first thing we want to do is make this transparent so we can see our PM 2.5 estimates behind it. So if you've got the layer styling panel up, we click on simple fill and then go down to fill and click this little down arrow next to the color and click transparent fill. And now we can see the county divisions of the PM 2.5 estimates. I'm going to make the county lines a little bit more transparent just to be able to see through them a little bit better. So I'm going to increase the transparency to about 60. So I searched if somebody is better at, Arc, or at GIS software than me, maybe they can figure out how to do this, but I wanted to sort of apply these county borders to the PM 2.5 estimates to make selecting estimates within a given county easier, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it. Um, the best I could come up with is the method I'm going to show you now. So if we zoom in, you can see each individual grid cell. Um, I'm going to switch back to using the mouse to move the map around rather than selecting. So you can see the grid cells within each individual county. So if you have a county of interest, what you can do is make sure you have your PM 2.5 layer, uh, your PM 2.5 estimates layer selected. Go up to your selecting tool and click select features by freehand. And what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a border around one of these counties. So let's choose, let's choose this county right here. Left clicking and hold, you can trace a shape around the grid cells that you are interested in. This is not an exact method by any means. I was hoping to have something more exact. And then releasing, and you can see that the grid cell estimates within this county have been selected. And the statistics are reflected in the statistics panel. Now, for finer analysis, you might want to actually examine the PM 2.5 estimates that you've now highlighted. So what we can do is we can actually output this subset into a separate CSV file. Make sure that your PM 2.5 estimate layer is selected. And if you right click on the layer in the layers panel, you can click save as. And choose a comma separated file or a CSV file. There are many options to choose from, but we're going to stick with CSV. Choose a file name. So we'll save it to this folder and we'll just say, we'll call it subset test. Click save. And we're going to save only the selected features and we are not going to add that file to our map. And then we click OK. All right, and it says saving done. So let's go to our folder and take a look at the subset that we have extracted. And here we see the 11 values that we've highlighted. We can see their latitude, longitude, country, and PM 2.5 values. And now you have any statistics calculations available to you in Excel. And I'm going to pause for another minute before we create our PM 2.5 map.
in case anybody needs to catch up or has any questions. Okay, I heard there were a couple of questions about viewing the statistics panel. You can view it two different ways. Both are accessed from the View drop-down menu. You can either view Statistical Summary, or you can go down to Panels and Statistics Panel. So for this next section, we are going to make a map of our PM 2.5 estimates with various features on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the shapefile layer. And by doing that, I'll do that again a little bit slower, I right click on the layer and just go to remove. It's asking me if I'm sure. Okay, so here we have our PM 2.5 estimates. To generate a map, go to Project, and down to New Print Composer. When we click this, it brings up this little dialog box asking for a name. You don't have to enter anything. If you just click OK, it's going to come up with a generic name such as Composer 1. And in this, we see our map window. The first thing we want to do is we want to add our PM 2.5 map. So we're going to go here and get it kind of centered and where we want it. Go back to the composer. And we're going to click Layout, Add a Map. And now we're going to draw a rectangle within which our map will show up. And this is adjustable. It doesn't have to be, I can make this bigger or smaller. And you can see that we're a little too zoomed in. Um, I can also, I don't want to move. Dragging this will move the rectangle. If we want to actually move the map within it, we go back up to layout and click Move Content. And now we can drag our map, our country, more to the center. To zoom out, we're going to increase the scale. And I'm just going to sort of increase this number. Let's say, put a four there. And by doing this, we can slowly zoom out and make it as big or as small as we'd like it. So I zoom out and then center it. It's a little bit off-center, but we want space for a legend. So our next step is to add a legend. Again, go up to Layout. Scroll down to add a legend. And similar to adding a map, the next step is to just draw a rectangle where you want the legend to go. And this legend is significantly bigger. <laughs> so we have a lot of entries. And formatting for that legend can be found over here under the Item Properties tab. So make sure you have that clicked. Um, just for ease of reading, I'm actually going to delete the legend title. And you can see that's immediately reflected in the map on the left. Scrolling down, here are the legend items. And I'm going to change this to say PM2.5 PM estimates. Scrolling down further, we can see more options. I'm going to look at the fonts. So we deleted the title, but the PM 2.5 estimates falls under the subgroup. If we click on the subgroup font, we can use this to change the font. Let's make it bold. And we can increase the font size. 
to make it a little bit more readable. And then each of these numbers falls under the item category. Clicking on that, you can increase that font size too. So the next thing we can add is uh, a scale bar. So again, go up to layout, add scale bar, and just clicking will bring it up. This scale bar also has several options, which come up here on the right under item properties. You can change the units. So if we wanted, right now it's in kilometers, we can change it to miles, and we'll keep it in kilometers. Um, number of segments, um, again, font size is something that we can easily change if we want to make it a little bit bigger. So the next thing we can add is a border. If we just click on our map, it brings us up to the map item properties. Scrolling down, we find the grids option. Clicking on that brings up these boxes. So what we want to do is we want to add a grid. So we click the green plus sign to add a new grid. And then we define certain parameters. So this is the coordinate reference system. We want to change that to what we used earlier. So these are coming up for me, but if you enter 4326 into the filter, you should see this WGS84 option. So I click that. So it's on the same coordinate system. And the next thing I define are my latitude and longitude intervals. So I'm going to select 10 degrees for both. But that's a little busy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scroll down here to grid frame. Right now it has no frame. And I'm going to select the zebra frame around. If we go back up, we can see the grid type here is solid. I can click frame and annotations only. So we're just left with the border grid. For labels around the border, we go down to draw coordinates, select draw coordinates, and you can see they appear as default on the outside of the borders. All of that is controlled by these menus. You can have it in decimal or degrees. You can have it show just on the top or just on the left, inside or outside the frame, vertically or horizontally, and those are controlled by these options. Um, we can, again, we can increase the font size to something a little bit more readable. And we can decrease the precision because we don't need three decimal places. And then we'll increase the font probably a little bit more. Other features that you can add to your map are just simple shapes. So if we want to draw a border around, say, our legend, this is going to get busy because the legend is a little bit big. I'm going to move the scale bar over to here. Just clicking on an item will allow you to move it where you want it to. So if we go up to layout, we can click add a shape, add a rectangle, and we just draw a rectangle right around our legend. And it shows up as opaque, but we can change these, the rectangle properties by going over here to item properties, style, and we can change this, which brings up this box. Clicking Simple Fill, we can scroll down to see all of the options. And similar to the grid cell symbols, we click this and make it transparent. 
and we can increase the thickness of the outline by a little bit to make it more prominent. Other things we can add are text, plot title. For that, go to layout and add label. And just click anywhere on your map where you would like your text to appear. By default, it shows up pretty small and says QGIS. So if we change the title, we can change it to say gridded PM 2.5 estimates 2014. And we drag to make this box bigger. And we can change the font from this appearance box. And we can also make it bold. So using these tools, you can make your own map um, however, however you want to. Um, to export this image, go to Composer, Export as Image, and pick a name. We'll call this Example 2. And you can save it in various file formats. I just chose a JPEG. And save it. And here are options for resolution, page width, page height. And save it, and we can go to our folder and view our JPEG. So now I can't seem to, there we go. So at this point, I am going to turn it back over to Pawan to go other to go over other relevant data portals and websites. So are you going to grab the screen? OK. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I think we had a great uh, session on going through the QGIS and how to visualize the data, extract the data, Again, this is, uh, like we said, we have like 200 people on board and uh, we can do so many things. But uh, <clears throat> the recordings will be available for everyone to watch at later stage and you can actually follow step by steps. Uh, the data which we have given is only for 2014, so I will show some other ways to get the data for other years. Also, you can use any other GIS software. We just use QGIS because it's a free and available. Uh, it's an open source. But feel free to use any GIS software. Uh, you can use your own country shape files. Uh, other than what we have shown, we have used the shape files which were available in public domain. And we don't produce the shape file here. We're just using what is available from on the internet or on public domain. So make sure. You can get your own shape file, look for GIS software, whatever uh, works best for you. Uh, but now I'm going to show you some uh, other resources where you can actually do a little bit more than what we have done so far in terms of getting more data or getting more help uh, to understand the data and to uh, apply that data for SDG application or other air quality application. So the first. Uh, so first website I'm going to go over is called, uh, uh, it's the Socioeconomic Data and Application Centers. It's a NASA uh, data center, one of the NASA data centers. It's uh, operated uh, from the University of Columbia. And uh, this website uh, basically hosts uh, uh, many, many different data sets. Uh, uh, both from NASA sources and non-NASA sources. And one of the data set they have is PM2.5. So this, if you can see my screen, you will see this website. Uh, and there are a lot different types of uh, 
tabs on the top you can see data uh, where you can see the different data sets. Uh, there is a map service where you can see the map galleries, map viewer, which I'm going to uh, quickly show you. And then you can also search based on different theme. Uh, you can look for agriculture, climate, health, environment, population, uh, depending on your interest and depending on what you are looking for. Uh, they also have several resources uh, in terms of the tools and multimedia for other kind of things. So this is a really very powerful website where you can access uh, many, many data sets uh, in one single place. So one of the, uh, one of the service this site provide is called uh, MapViewer. And this is how it looks. And the link of this website is provided in the PowerPoint presentation, which you just saw. And what it does, uh, the MapViewer is, uh, it provides you a way to visualize four different uh, uh, environmental parameters or any parameter which is available through the CDAC website. You can visualize them simultaneously so that you can compare them with each other. You can zoom in, you can do that. So in this right now uh, current view, what you see is the population density on top left corner for 2015. Uh, on the right top is PM 2.5 uh, data. Uh, this is not exactly the same data which we have seen just now in the presentation. It is a little bit different data and I will uh, briefly show you how to get more detail on that data sets. And there are other parameters like anthropogenic biomes on the left, uh, bottom left panels and the bottom right panel is basically probability of urban expansion in 2030. So Good thing about this uh, feature is this uh, mapping services. If you zoom on any of the one or zoom in or out using the plus or minus sign, all four panels actually do that simultaneously. So you can look the same area for different parameters simultaneously. If you don't like to do zoom four together and you want to do separately, then on the left side, there is a marks. Uh, uh, you can click that and it will actually undo that. Uh, so you can actually, if you click that, then that map will disappear. Okay, now if you go on each of the panel on the right side, uh, there is a option to select the parameters. And if you go here, you will see collections of the data sets which are there. And the one which we are using is, uh, I believe, called satellite derived environmental indicators. And under which, if you click, then you will find several instances of PM 2.5, global annual average PM 2.5 for the 2010. Uh, you can also find for the multiple year mean 2001 to 2010, 2010 to 2012. This is good if you want to see the difference between different years you can actually select these multiple years of the data and see simultaneously here. Uh, I will leave at this point of our, this website uh, since we are running out of time and I want to show a few more websites. But please feel free to browse this website. Uh, there's a lot of data there and there's really some nice tools to browse through. The next website is called, uh, uh, is a group in Canada at Dalhousie University, they are uh, pi they pioneered in creating PM 2.5 data sets uh, using satellite and model. And one of the component in the DMEC model is come from their data sets. Uh, the good thing about their data sets is they have processed the data uh, for many, many, many years, uh, all the way starting 1998 to 2015. So in current webinar, the WHO data sets is only available for 2014, which is approved by WHO site. But this data set is available for last 16, 17 years, although they are not same, exactly same as uh, WHO data sets. There may be few differences here and there, uh, but they are very close to each other. Uh, if you open this, again, the link is given in your PowerPoint slide. If you open the link, you will see a page which says surface PM 2.5 with the map. And you will see some description about the data sets. 
if you want to read more about the methods and uncertainties in the data sets, you can go through this uh, publication which are listed there. Uh, there are several of them. Uh, now, if you go to the bottom, then you will see start seeing the PM 2.5 data. And there are three different sets uh, they arranged for different years. So the first one is satellite derived PM 2.5, 1998 at 35% relative humidity. So when environmental agencies actually reports the data or the ground sensors make the measurement, they actually make measurement of dry PM 2.5, which is about 35% to 40% relative humidity. And that's why this data set has been specifically created to support that kind of analysis or to at least compare with what the ground measurement says. Uh, they are available in three different data, for, uh, data format, net CDF, ask is a file, KMZ and then the CSV. So there are four different formats. Uh, the resolution is also, you can see there is a 0.1 degree, which is about 10 or 11 kilometer. Uh, there is also one kilometer data available. Uh, if, but this data will be more noisier than the 10 kilometer. But the data sets is available if you're really looking for finer scale uh, resolution or looking for the finer scale gradients in our specific city. Again, all the data is annual mean numbers, uh, and they are, there are three different data sets. One is regular data sets, and the, the GWR adjusted data set is basically a geographical bedded regression uh, analysis. They have performed over location where they have some kind of a ground measurement to bias correct it. Uh, so please explore these data sets uh, if you are looking for longer time series. Again, these are global data sets, um, and a lot of information is available on this website. And uh, feel free to contact the authors uh, for these data sets. They are very nice people in responding emails. So, um, and we should also, if you have a specific question, we should be able to uh, answer those questions as well. The next uh, site is called the State of Global Air. Uh, this is a very recently launched website. Uh, it is uh, started from Health Effect Institute in the U.S. and it is uh, it has partnership with many uh, uh, scientists from many countries around the world. And this is one of the first site actually which puts out the how, what is the state of global air. Uh, this website uses the data which we just saw from the uh, Canada Canadian Dallas University website. And it does give you a little bit more in terms of uh, the data itself. You can visualize the data in multiple ways here, in maps and time series, uh, and you can extract the data. So uh, this website, so for example, you can look to explore the data. If I click on the explore the data on the top, then I uh, will get a map, uh, things. There are two tabs here. One is the air quality where you can see the population weighted PM 2.5 concentration, and you can see, select the parameters, you can select the, there are two parameters right now, one is ozone and one is the PM 2.5. Now you can select the countries here, And once you select the countries, the data for uh, the time series of that country will display on the right side. You can actually compare also with that country, with the specific country or region, and those things will. And this is very interactive time series, actually. If you click on the, any of those symbols, you will see more information. Uh, as you move your mouse around, you will see the values and other kind of information. Uh, they also have a maps, so you can actually look the interactive map. If you again browse your mouse over any of the country, you will see the values and the years. Uh, you can also see the data in tabulated form. And you can actually download the data on the right side if you like to download the data from this website. So this is another website to get into that. Uh, they also have a health impact analysis here uh, based on the PM 2.5 data. Uh, what is the number of deaths attributed to the PM 2.5 in a specific country, in a specific year. All that information is available here and you can really uh, use it uh, to pinpoint uh, different regions in terms of the, how the air quality is impacting uh, people's health. 
Okay, moving on. Uh, the next website I'm going to show is a air quality uh, website. This is a NASA uh, hosted at Goddard, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center uh, at the center where we are located in Washington DC. And this is a air quality website where we try to put a lot of the data sets, analysis, papers, resources related to the air quality. Uh, right now this website uh, is mostly has a nitrogen dioxide data sets. Uh, uh, from the satellites. Uh, you can get these data sets from the over different cities, global maps. You can look to different uh, years and compare them. Uh, so for example, on the top of the uh, front page of the website, you will see a map where you can see slide this war and you can actually look the year after uh, what is the before concentration versus the current concentration and you can see how the things are changing. So if you see over United States, Eastern US, you will see NO2 is, has gone down a lot uh, in last five, ten years. Uh, you also have a uh, NO2 data over specific uh, cities around the world. So uh, there is a 195 world cities where the data is available. You can click on those and you can get actually uh, maps like this and so this will provide you what is the current uh, uh, NO2 values and how it has been changed over the last 10-15 years. So this is again very nice resource uh, to for people who are looking beyond PM2.5. Uh, this is NO2 data sets uh, which has been extensively published, used in various uh, governments reports and United Nations has used it extensively to convey the message about air quality. Okay, moving forward, I have one more website to show and this is called a HA cost or NASA Health and Air Quality Applied Science Team. This is a NASA uh, selected a team of scientists uh, recently, very recently last year, uh, where they are trying to uh, work on uh, uh, where they are trying to work on research and data product uh, related which can be useful for the end users or agencies uh, who can benefit from the NASA data. Uh, this team is uh, extensively connected with the end users. The most of the focus for this team is United States but they do have several projects which goes beyond the United States and internationally. And Again, this is nice resource for people who are looking more in terms of the research and new data products. Uh, again, uh, if you have more question on them, uh, you can actually contact scientists uh, uh, from this website. If you look on this uh, under the people, you will see HA cost members and you can actually contact each members depending on your interest or what you are looking for. So again, useful res uh, resources for people who really wants to dig into more into satellite data and how to use and to get more help. With that, uh, I think we are towards end of the, this presentation and the last thing I would like to say is about the homework. So we have a week three homework. Uh, again, the link is provided on your PPT slide. Uh, slide and I'm just showing it here on my screen and this is due on April 4. Uh, it's basically some of the exercise which we did today using the QGIS. Uh, you do the same exercise, similar exercise and uh, response to set up two, three question uh, regarding uh, those, uh, what you find out from the QGIS exercise. So this will really give you another chance to practice what we did today. Uh, on the data sets which we used. With that, uh, I think I will hand over to, we are going a little bit over the time, but I think this is the last session, so it's okay. Uh, I'll hand over to Dr. Uh, Mr. Brock, who will provide you some information on the survey, and then we will take question and answer afterward. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to start addressing some of the questions I see. Um, if any further questions, please do put them in the question box. I'll get to as many as I can. 
Uh, so I have a question here. Which model do you prefer for simulating aerosols for the DMAC model? Is there any particular model you suggest or name of a model which has given realistic results? Um, the model used to simulate for simulated aerosol output for the DMAC model is the GSCHEM atmospheric chemical transport model. GSCHEM is very commonly and widely used. Um, each model is going to have sort of pros and cons. It may overestimate one particular aerosol species, underestimate another. Um, so as far as a particular, there is no model that wins. Um, but the GSCHEM model is the one they used. Um, for anybody having difficulty using, like for QGS not loading, I'm sorry, I can't really address those here. Um, I can just uh, address uh, what I've covered. Um, okay, I am seeing another question about displaying uh, various panels. So let me grab, okay. Okay, so I'm going to bring back my QGIS. Unfortunately, I have to minimize these questions while I do this. Okay, so just to go over viewing panels very briefly. So I'll just take away all of mine. No panels for me. And okay, so here I just have my map. If I go to view, I scroll down to panels. The first panel I'm going to bring up is a layers panel and that shows all of the different layers and data sets that I'm working with. The layer styling panel can be either accessed by this little paintbrush right here or going back to view, going down to panel and going down to layer styling. The statistics panel can also be accessed two different ways. Going to view, go to statistical summary, or go to view, go down to panels, and click on statistics panel. Okay. Let me see, I'm looking for unanswered questions. Okay, um, here is a question about viewing the PM 2.5 estimates. Um, I'm getting the question uh, that the map goes blank when they choose graduated. It only shows with pixels. So let me just, can just start this. So going to layer and adding our delimited text layer. I'm going to go through this part uh, relatively quickly just to get us back to our estimates. Everything is displaying correctly, so we're going to click OK. And we're going to choose WGS84. OK. So now we're back to our view of India, but we're not viewing our PM 2.5. Going over to the layer styling, click on this single symbol. We want to view the graduated view, and it does disappear. The first thing we're going to do is choose the PM 2.5 estimates from this drop-down menu. And then we want to make sure we have our proper mode uh, checked. So we're going to choose equal interval, make sure we have our classes, and you click classify. And there we see our PM 2.5 estimates. I saw another question asking to review how you take away the border. If you go to symbol, and we're going to click on this to change it, and it brings up uh, click simple marker to bring up this menu. And scrolling down, you can see this outline style drop down menu. We click no pen. 
and it takes the borders off. And you can also change the, the shape of each individual grid cell. Okay, I'm going to go back to my questions. Uh, somebody's asking about a file crashing. If you're trying to load the entire grid of data set, it might just be very large. Um, beyond that, I'm not sure why it might be crash crashing, unfortunately. So a lot of questions here about viewing the graduated style. So hopefully me having gone over that clears some of that up. Um, here's a question about the composer layer. So if so to bring up the map composer, go to project, new print composer. This brings up a dialog box where you can name your window, click OK, and that brings up your map composer window where we uh, inserted each of the components of our map. Uh, here's a question about other versions of QGIS. I don't see, there, some of the choices might be different, but any version of QGIS should be fine. For example, I think there's an even more recent version of QGIS available for download, um, and it, that should be completely fine. Okay, I have a question about reviewing the composer again. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming the question is, is how to bring up the composer layer, which I'll show again. If there's a question beyond that, uh, please type it in the question box. So from the main QGIS window, go to project, new print composer. And then click OK, and it brings up your composer window. And then from here, you can use the layout command to add a map just by drawing the rectangle, and it adds our map from the previous page. OK. Um, it looks like I've addressed uh, the questions uh, that people have entered. So this will conclude our webinar series. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day. And please do fill out that survey. One last thing for those of you who are still uh, on. Um, anybody who maybe had difficulty following along, um, I want to remind everybody that the recording will be available by the end of the week. And we, what we're going to do is we're going to give an extra week on the homework. We're going to change the homework due date so that everybody gets a chance to view the recording um, to have it available for the homework. Thank you.